Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Kiki Sparkles. Hello, that's me. And uh, man, it's the end of the year. It has not been a good year for superhero movies. And Variety is talking about the end of comic book movie culture. Uh oh. Uh I mean, I just think it took, it's surprising it took them this long. Yeah, so we've been talking about this. We actually did a video that uh, a lot of people watched uh, talking about the end of, of uh, Hollywood nerd culture. And, and this is another part of it. Basically, uh, you know, Hollywood nerd culture uh, went mainstream when the superhero movies were big. Marvel movies were huge. And uh, Dungeons and Dragons was big. And, uh, you know, anime started to get bigger, you know, outside of the circles that's always been big in. And uh, all of this stuff blew up. And, of course, we had activists that wanted to get into that stuff, into that scene and uh, take control of it because they had a platform. Mm -hmm. And now the whole thing's imploding. It's all it's all imploding. Uh-oh, guys, what are you going to do? Because this is what was supposed to save comic books was the movie. Somehow, magically, we're going to boost comic book sales. Not when the, the comic book stories aren't the same characters you see on screen. I know, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about this. To have Variety come out, and they use some pretty harsh language and say that it's over, man. Like, comic book culture mainstream the mainstreaming of comic book culture is over and nerds are like yes thank god finally we're going to talk about it before we get into it any further please subscribe for more pop culture news views and rant sketch get a woohoo if you do woohoo uh, go out to shopclownfish.com so many of you already have pick up a copy of crimson wren and previously on clownfish tv one or both uh, we've got these books in stock Mm -hmm. And uh, Geeky's been shipping them out daily, so... I have a whole bunch ready to go on, on Tuesday, because we don't have mail again until Tuesday. Yeah, so uh, lots of people getting their books, and thank you so much for the support. We're going to be doing more books next year. We're working on some, working on some plans. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. this uh, Variety dropped it uh, earlier today. Why the fall of comic book movie culture is inevitable. It's not just bad sequels. It's simpler than that. The fancy heroes have been strip mined. Mm -hmm. uh, they've taken it from behind. They've, uh, yeah. Okay. Anyway, anyway uh, they're talking about the mediocre product and people are kind of like, look, you know, comic, basically the gist of it. We're not going to read this word for word, but the gist of it from what I did read was we've done so many Batman movies, so many Superman movies, so many tertiary character movies, and they're on TV and they're in video games and they're all over the place. And it's not special anymore. It's not uh, no, special. No, it's just, it's just like, you know, every other month there is something from where either a show or a movie. And I'm sorry, I, I think next year we have, what, Echo and stuff. Yeah. I don't think that's going to be very good, but that could just be me. But, you know. So here's where they get kind of snarky, though, because they're like uh, the very drubbing these movies received at the box office and the drumbeat of snark. In critical reviews, you might say there's hope. Comic book movie culture is, after all, only as good as the movie's. It gives us this year uh, was the corporations Disney and Warner Brothers like, made bad movies. Let's name names. Disney and Warner Brothers failed. Yeah. You know what? Because it's safe to say it now. Variety. Where were you when everybody was pointing this out before? You know what I mean? Like you all come out now when it's already been safe after a bunch of you shit on people who've been saying it. It's kind of like when when like if somebody dies and and then you're like, oh, I always knew they were going to die because of this, this and this. But you would never say, hey, I think you're going to die before because, look, Variety needed superhero movies to be successful because they needed to be able to write about superhero movies. You know, that was a big source of traffic for them for a long time. There were a lot of channels that popped up on YouTube. And that's all they covered was, was the MCU and people actually gave a shit, mm -hmm. you know, Star Wars when people actually gave a shit and now they don't and now they don't. So they're like, well, I guess we can, since we're not making any money off of them anyway, might as well just freaking <laughs> rip the bandaid off and, and say what's going on. There's a temptation to point a finger at the producers and execs and vilify them for their shoddy product. Uh, but now it's part of the new couch potato rebel culture. What? Critics on their reflexive high horse mostly hate comic book movies, and more and more they have used their reviews of them to chastise the man. That is kind of true. Wait, wait, which critics? I don't know. You mean, are they talking about fans or are they talking about critics? I think critics, like critic critics. Uh, okay. You know. Because oh, yeah, the fans would seem to be on the other side of the fence. The fans, yeah, would be on the other side of the fence, but they have their own collective resentment and rebel fire. This year, the critics in the Comic-Con horde 
stood shoulder to shoulder, joining forces to look at the suits and uh, to look the suits right in the eye and say, "You did this to us. We're bored as hell, and we're not going to take it." Well, anymore. you know, here's the thing, though: the critics are just now joining in. Before it was, except for a couple, you know, like things like Eternals or whatever. They just loved anything, especially when it was like, you know, Captain Marvel or something like that. And it was all the horrible, toxic man, baby, you know, racist fans who were the problem. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now they're actually calling out crap, too. So when they're saying join forces, they're the ones that are finally joining in with the fans who have been calling this shit out. Uh, they said there's a larger reality about comic book movie culture that we tend to ignore. Let's state it outright. This shit is starting to fail because it's spent. <laughs> because it's been used up. I'm not talking. That's funny. Variety said this shit is starting to fail. Starting to fail. Starting. Where have you been? <laughs> it's like oh, that needs to be the title of the video. Uh, because it's been used up. I'm not like a used up and okay. That's put away not... wet. That's a, that's about horses. We're talking about horses. Okay. I'm not just talking about Ant Man or the Flash. I'm talking about the characters who got us in the door in the first place. Superman, Batman, Spider Man, Wonder Woman, Captain America. No, if they were themselves, I think we'd be fine. I think we would be fine. But everybody keeps changing everything. How those are DC except for a couple? Anyway. We need... Oh, this is oh, interesting, wait, the though. The first are DC except for the last ones. Go ahead. This is interesting, though. We need these characters to be gods again. And they were until they weren't. Memo to James Gunn. Gods have a way of losing power when you stick them in reruns. So not just uh, the oversaturation of these characters, but how these characters are portrayed. They've been trying to humanize superheroes. You know, and Spider-Man's always been like the everyman or whatever, mm -hmm. but you don't humanize somebody like Superman or Thor or Captain America. They're supposed to be larger than life. They can relate to humans. They love humans. They protect well, humans. Well, a lot of them are human, but you know. They are, but I'm just saying like, but they're supposed to be above it all. They're supposed to be what we aspire to be. You know, Wonder Woman. They're supposed to be what we aspire to be, not... Hey, they've got all the freaking hangups and problems that we have, you know, except they got superpowers and, and that's what they've been doing with the comics. They've been dragging these characters through the mud, you know? Um, so this is interesting. They talk about how, you know, Star Wars was created at a certain time and place. And now it's all imitation, imitation, Star Wars, imitation Spielberg. Yeah. You know, I mean, this is just very, very, very interesting to have variety called out. Uh, they said it's not on life support yet. Comic book movie culture. Um, yeah. I, I disagree with that. I think if James Gunn doesn't knock it out of the park with Superman, I think it's over. I think it's definitely over. Uh, Bob Iger said that they spread themselves too thin. But like you said, what do they have to look forward to next year? What do we have next year? A bunch of D-list, E-list, well, F-list characters. So here's a, here's a list of some of the movies that are coming out next year. So let's look at the superhero movies and see if there's anything exciting we I got look at all the movies, but there isn't much that's exciting. Meta Web, hell no. No. Uh, Deadpool 3 is about the yeah, only that's one. Yeah, that one I think will. Deadpool um, 3. Craven, doubt no. it. Uh, Venom 3, maybe. They have Joker. Joker, yeah. Is that really a superhero movie, though? Mm, it's a, no, not. It's a musical. Um, we've got, yeah, Lord of the Rings, no. Wait, is that, that's next year? That's coming. Oh, is Apparently. that the anime one? I don't know. I don't care. Sonic I mean, there's barely, three. I'm looking at what's coming out next year and there's very few things that I even give two shits about. I know that much. No, there's not much. There's not much coming out. I'm sorry. I mean, there, there's stuff coming out, but it's the stuff that's coming out is, is non superhero stuff. So we're talking just strictly superhero movies and there's not much excitement other than mm -hmm. Deadpool in my, my personal, uh, personal opinion. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So this is interesting. Uh, they said, if superhero culture is now entering the early stages of its death throes, it will actually be for an honorable reason. Comic book movies were never going to die because Ant-Man or Captain Marvel was bad. I disagree with that. <laughs> the only reason they were going to die is that they had served their purpose. The only reason they're going to die is because there's how many of them? The, yeah. There's too many of them. No, Everybody's sick to death of them. They made us dream of men and women in capes who could the, fly and who seemed indestructible because all that made us feel good. But then oh, it stopped please. making us feel good because we had already been there and dreamed that. And it was time perhaps to get back to reality. No, people don't want to get back to reality. They just don't want superhero movies. That's They don't want shitty superhero movies. Look, if they were all 
good. People still get their hopes up, right? They still get their hopes up when they announce like, oh, there's a new X-Men movie coming. Oh, there's new. And they, they're all about it. They want to see what's going on. And then they're like, oh, shit, this looks mm -hmm. terrible. This sounds terrible. What uh, what's being rumored for the Fantastic Four and the X-Men is terrible. But, you know, there's not much excitement in the comic books either, because before it used to be the reason that people got excited about the movies is they read the comics and they liked the comics and they wanted to see that on the big screen. There's nothing being done in comics now that's worth bringing to the big screen. The only thing I was excited about maybe for like the MCU show was was Daredevil. And it's going to be nothing like Netflix, so I don't care. They had to reshoot. It was so bad, they had to reshoot it. Right. I already know it's going to be like She-Hulk 2.0. Well, yeah. they might try to change it and fix it now, not Netflix. If it was Netflix Daredevil, I'd be all over that. But instead, I'll just go rewatch Netflix Daredevil because it was actually good. It is still Netflix. Netflix Daredevil is, in my opinion, the best modern Marvel adaptation ever. It might be the best, one of the best live action adaptations ever. Uh, it actually ages very, very well. They thankfully got to a place where it made sense to, to stop it. So you can just pretend there is no fourth season. You know, it's it's that's it. it they told the story and uh, everybody lives happily ever after. Right. And that's it. And that's my head cannon. But uh, I don't know, guys, I think they're just going to start looking to uh, make excuses and play the blame game. And the reality is, is we had a lot, a glut of really subpar shit. And it kind of reminds me of the video game crash. You know, it happened in the early 80s. Like, video games were doing great. And then they just started making all kinds of shitty games. I mean, they were just crapping out bad ports of Pac-Man and E.T. And every other company was making subpar video games for Atari and whatever because they didn't have the licensing locked down. And it, it crashed the market. But Nintendo came a couple of years later and they kept a tighter rein on things. They kept a tighter leash on things. And they had some quality control. And guess what? Video games never went away again. You know, that's 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 it. That's my take. That's my take on it. I don't know. We're going to wrap this up. Yep. So please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.